I want to begin tonight where we started, and this is our part three of Why God Allows a Crisis. We come to a close of that tonight as we share God's word, and I want to be focused and deliberate, and I want to ask you to turn with me in your Bibles, your smartphones, your tablets, your iPhones and iPads. If you would go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, and the New Living Translation. Paul writes to us, and he shares with us, We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die, but... I want you to put a note there and highlight it, underline it. But as a result, we stop relying on ourselves and learn to rely only on God who raises the dead. And he did rescue us from mortal danger and he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him and he will continue to rescue us. And so tonight as we... uh, talk about the conclusion of the matter, why God allows a crisis, there are some notable things here as we summarize. We share it with you in our previous session that you can know when God plans to show you something new about himself, and we can know that God wants to draw us closer to him and know that he wants to bring us to a deeper level, and how can we know these things? It's when we run into a crisis. In fact, when we run into a crisis and we are left to our own devices and have to decide that I'm going to trust God and rely on God, then we can know God at a deeper level. It's oftentimes during these moments in life where people find themselves in situations that they themselves cannot fix. I don't know about you who are watching tonight, but have you uh, over these last several weeks begin to think about moments and times in your life that you couldn't fix it yourself. I know I've thought about it. I've thought about the goodness of God where he has shown himself strong on my behalf, on my family's behalf. In fact, he's shown himself strong on this city, on this church's behalf because of the goodness of God of where it was only he who could get us through situations and circumstances. So many times people, they find themselves in different scenarios, different predicaments, and when things begin to unravel, in fact, one way that people like to say it is, you know what, all hell broke loose. I'm here to tell you today that I'm not worried about hell breaking loose. I'm concerned that as we trust God, all of heaven will be at our disposal. I want to get God involved in what's going on, not only in my life, but in the life of the people that I care about, that I'm concerned about. So I'm not going to give any place to hell. I'm going to give first place and all places to God and what he has available to us in heaven. You see, you know you're in a crisis when all of your options are gone. Not only when all of your options are gone, but when everything you thought you could turn to doesn't work anymore. You can't negotiate your way out of a situation. You not only can't negotiate your way out of it, and and I know I've probably got some folks who are watching, and you believe that you're a pretty slick talker, a pretty fast talker, but I'm here to tell you tonight that there are some things that only God can get us out of, praise God. There are situations and circumstances that will come against us. In fact, It doesn't matter how many scientists we have across the globe right now. Nobody has found a cure for coronavirus. But I tell you, there's a God who knows, who sees, who understands, and he's going to give someone the antidote for this thing called coronavirus, COVID-19. There are times in our life where we not only can't negotiate our way out of it, but you can't spin your way out of it. You can't talk your way out of it. No matter how smart you think you are, not only how smart you think you are, but how cute you think you are. And I know we got some cute people who are watching here tonight and understand this. I want to tell you, we love you. God loves you. And and understand that all of the things in the natural, they cannot get us out of certain crisis moments. In fact, you can't even network your way out of it. It doesn't matter how many black books you have. doesn't matter how big your Rolodex is. There are some things that we will encounter in life, 
And we need to tell our children that there are some things that they probably can't even lie their way out of. Glory to God, because this is this is an opportunity while we're dealing with this to bring the whole family together. And so you can't network your way out of it. I shared with us on last week that God will not put more on us than I can bear. I know we've all heard that, but that's quite frankly a popular myth. God will not put more on us than we can bear. In fact, Paul told us here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, here's what Paul says. We think you ought to notice, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble that we went through in the province of Asia. Paul says he personalizes it, and he says we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, so much so that he continues and says, we thought we would never live through it. I've encountered in my short life many people that I've had an opportunity to spend time talking to. Not only to spend time talking to, but in many instances, encouraging them through one life situation after another. And it's not uncommon to have people say, I didn't think I'd make it through it. How many of us who are watching in tonight, who are listening to the words that I'm sharing with you, how many of you have ever thought to yourself or even verbalized it to a friend, to a loved one, to a close confidant and said, I went through this and I never thought I'd get through it. I never thought I'd see my way through. I never thought I'd get to the other side of the situation that we were facing, whether it was a financial matter, whether it was a relational matter, whether it was dealing with your children, but somewhere in your mind you say it, I never thought I'd get through it. Then on the other hand, you've got those that say, well, somebody told me, God, he won't ever put more on you than you can bear. He won't ever put more on you than you can bear. Again, very common, very, very churchy phrase, amen, praise God. But the reality of it is this. Paul tells us we went through some stuff and we were crushed. In fact, in our own natural ability, we were overwhelmed. So much so that we thought we wouldn't live through it. In fact, Paul says we expected to die. Again, I'm talking with so many people uh, that I've encountered in my life. I've met folks who thought they were going to die because a loved a loved one left them, or they got laid off of a job, and uh, they didn't have the resources that they thought they should have, and that they were used to having in their at their disposal. But I'm here to tell you that if God is your source, it doesn't matter how many jobs you come into contact with, it doesn't matter who walks off and leaves you, it doesn't matter because God is your source, my source, and our source. And so as we look through this and really begin to focus on why God allows a crisis. I share it with you that if you ever, if there ever was a hopeless situation, Paul, he himself was in it. Paul hadn't done anything, in fact, wrong. And a lot of times we experience things and moments in our life where we think, wow, what did I do wrong this time? Paul, he says, I didn't do anything wrong. In fact, I was doing exactly what God told me to do. I was doing exactly what God had anointed me to do. I was doing exactly what God had assigned me to do. Maybe many of you don't remember who Paul is. Paul is that same disciple. He's that same apostle who had held the coats of others while they stoned Stephen. Paul, he was that same person who had persecuted Christians in times previous. But now Paul finds himself on the missionary field, doing the work of ministry, serving God, and bringing others into the body of Christ. Paul, he himself knew something about being on the wrong side of God. And now he says that I went through some tough moments in my life, and so I shared with us previously that all crisis moments are not because you did something wrong. Parents, as you're sitting there, uh, loved ones, adults, children alike, as you're sitting there watching and listening tonight, can I tell you something? Look at that person sitting next to you and tell them, it's not because you did something wrong. There are moments in our life where simply we're following the path of God and he allows a crisis moment to happen and he allows situations in our life to appear hopeless 
because God's trying to direct our focus back to him. Here it is tonight, Wednesday night. No NBA basketball. No spring baseball. In fact, new development. The Tokyo Summer Olympics have been postponed uh, to a date not certain. Wow. Imagine that. I mean, there's only so much Netflix you can watch. There's so many kung fu movies you can turn back and watch. I mean, how many times can I watch Enter the Dragon? <laughs> how many Transformers? In fact, how many of you watching and listening in tonight are going back and going through Matrix more than one time? There's only so much television we can watch. And what God's saying is, I don't want you watching television. I want you watching your loved ones. I want you spending time with me. I want you to spend time in the Word. I want you to spend time praying. I want you to spend time meditating. I want you to spend time rehearsing the promises of God. They are yea and they are amen. Put the TV down. Put the NBA down. Put baseball down. Put March Madness so that you don't get mad. Spend time with me, and I'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding if you spend time with me. And so God allows crisis moments to bring us into deeper relationship with him that we then might bring, in, bring ourselves to deeper relationship with one another. As you're watching tonight and listening, how many of you need quality time with your loved ones? How many of you need not only quality time with your loved ones, but when's the last time you told your children, I love you? When's the last time you told your spouse, I love you, and didn't have an expectation of anything but their love and respect in return? When's the last time you just sat down with one another and began to talk about your day, to talk about what's happening in your life, what's going on? Because we get caught up in the busyness of life, we lose so much of one another's life. We allow crisis situations to come, and then instead of us turning to God, we want super God. We want a God with a cape. We want a God who's going to jump out of a telephone booth and respond to our crisis moments when, in fact, he's equipped us with everything we will ever need to be able to overcome any situation or circumstance that we will encounter in our life because he loves us so much. Maybe there's somebody who feels like giving up. I want to tell you tonight, you can't throw in the towel. But what I can tell you is if you stop relying on yourself and trust God, a God who raises the dead, a God who Paul writes and says he rescued us from mortal danger and he'll do it again. And so tonight, in my final comments, it's one thing to say that God is a healer when you're not sick. I know what it is to be sick. I've been in intensive care not one time, but twice. God, he's a healer. He not only is a healer, but he's a deliverer. He'll raise you up. I think about the moments that I spent in intensive care, not one day, not two days, but four days. But God, he healed my body. I know what I'm talking about. So when I say he's a healer, I'm not talking about what I just read in the B-I-B-L-E. I'm talking about what I experienced. It's a whole different ball game when you're sick. To know that God is a way maker, you're only able to know he's a way maker when you don't know your way. How's God going to get me out of this situation? How's God going to bring me through this situation? Have you ever been lost before? I know what it is. You know, when we ride in these nice, modern, fancy vehicles, we have this thing called GPS, Global Positioning System. But what about the God Positioning System? Where God comes and he allows a crisis called COVID-19 to happen across the globe. And he says that if you allow the God Positioning System to take priority in your life and you elevate me in your life instead of idolizing all of the other things that have entertained you, I can get you to where I've always wanted you to be. God, he tells us he can take the lack out of our life. He can take the struggle, the stress, and the strain out of our lives when we rest in the finished work of, of God. I want to tell you something tonight. 
It's one thing to say that God is a provider. But if you've lost your job, will you trust him? If your spouse has lost his or her job, will you trust God to put food in the refrigerator? Will you trust God to make a way out of no way? You see, God allows crisis situations in our lives because it is in those moments we discover God in a way that we've never known him before. When he wants to move us to a new level of intimacy, God, he typically will use a crisis to do that. I'm reminded of the scriptures in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. He reminds us and he tells us not only on what things we ought to think about, but God begins to share some amazing truths with us about not only what to uh, think on these things, but he says, he says these things in Philippians chapter 4. I want you to turn there with me for just a moment. He tells us, always be full of joy. In the Lord, I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. And he says in verse 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's already done. It is then that you and I will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. It is his peace that will guard our hearts and our minds as we live in Christ Jesus. I want to tell you something tonight, child of God. Trust him. Trust not only him, but trust the process of God. That as we trust the process of God, he will remind us that I have given you peace and perfect peace. That word perfect is the word complete. I've given you a complete peace. Peace that no matter what the circumstance or the situation is, you will maintain a place of peace in your life. You'll maintain the promises of God, and you'll know that I will bring you through this situation. I'll bring you through this circumstance. I'm reminded of when God told Moses that he would lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. The Israelites, they fled Egypt on their way to the promised land. I'm here tonight to say all across Augusta and all of you that are watching through Facebook Live tonight, God has made us a promise that he will get us through this. He'll not only get us through this, but he'll take us to the promises of God. And his promises, they are yea and they are amen. You see, the children of Israel, they were allowed to run right into a wall. I know, maybe you have experienced your backs up against the wall. It looks like every time we turn on the television, 24-7, 365, everybody's talking about COVID-19 coronavirus. So much so that I want to encourage you, turn the television off. We can't change what they're saying on the news. We can't even frame the story before it happens. But what we can do is make a decision about what we flood our spirits with. What we can do is make a decision, not only what we allow to flood and invade our spirits and our territory, and we can make a decision that we're not going to allow COVID-19 to consume us, to overwhelm us, to overtake us, and to bring us out of the place of God. You see, the children of Israel, they found themselves in the book of Exodus in a place that only God could get them out of. You see, here in the book of Exodus, in chapter 14, we're reminded of a series of things where God, he tells Moses to go to Pharaoh and remind him and say, let my people go. I'm here tonight by way of Facebook Live to say coronavirus, let the people of God go. To not only let the people of God go, but I have put my trust in him and who I live, I move, and I have my being. And as we talk about why God allows a crisis, he'll allow our backs to get pushed up against the wall. In Exodus, he allows the children of Israel to find their backs up against the Red Sea. Can you imagine fleeing Egypt, the place of bondage, the place of not enough, the place of where you're just getting by? 
And God, he says, but I've got a promised land for you. I've got a place that's much better than where you are, but you got to go through some stuff in order to get to the promises that I have for you. That's what he did with the children of Israel. God allows things in our life so that we can witness him as our only option. You see, here it is, Moses. He has the children of Israel at the Red Sea, and there's an army of 600 chariots and other foot soldiers who are coming behind them. Pharaoh and his army are coming to kill the children of Israel because they said we should have kept them as slaves. Maybe during this season before coronavirus, before COVID-19, maybe, just maybe, this is God's time to give us a stop by the side of the road and say that many of us were enslaved to the things of the world. And he said, I'm bringing you out. I'm not just bringing you out, but I'm going to bring you up as well. Here it is, just like the children of Israel their backs are against the wall because they've got a red sea that they have to encounter. I don't know what your red sea is tonight. I don't know what your red sea is tonight. But what I do know is that if God brought us out of Egypt, he'll get us through Egypt. And if he got us through Egypt, he'll bring us to the red seas of life. But he will get us through the red seas of life, too. Here it is. God can do the same for you, just like he did for the children of Israel, if we trust him. And if we not only trust him, but have an expectation that God will see us to the other side. God tells Moses, as Pharaoh's army is bearing down on him. Maybe you feel like the world is bearing down on you tonight. I know there are many of us who are on the front lines of dealing with this thing in our own communities, in our own homes. It's a tough conversation maybe to have with your children about what's going on. Why are we at home? Why are restaurants not open? Why are all of these things happening all across the nation? Well, maybe this is our moment to tell our children about a God who sees, about a God who knows, about a God who hears, a God who looks beyond our faults and he sees our needs, and he steps in. Maybe this is the moment that God's leveraging and using and bringing us to a place of where we're no longer raising up a generation that knows not their God because they've made the God of idols, of money and iPhones and iPads and smartphones and clothes and shoes, and he's saying, now I need you to spend time with me. Just maybe. That's what God's telling us tonight. And so as you're watching, as you're listening, as you're taking notes, I share this with you. Allow God to bring you to a place of where your back's against the wall. Not only where your back's against the wall, but I'm talking to you out there. If you hear me, I want you to shout, I hear you, Pastor Davis. God's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to us. Let him use the crisis that you're in to show you his power, his presence, his protections, his provision, and his ability to turn your situation around. I'm not worried about COVID-19. Because I've trusted God for his promised protection, his provision his promises because I know that the God who allows the crisis just like he did with the children facing Pharaoh's army and a sea in front of them Moses he lifts up his staff you know the story you've heard the Bible story before and the Red Sea parts it opens up and the children of Israel they walk on dry, on dry ground they cross over into the promises of God. I want to share this with you tonight. Maybe you're listening to me and you're saying, I just don't, I don't see it, Pastor Davis. I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. You know, there are moments where we don't see it, but do you hear it? Do you hear the voice of God pu pulling and tugging 
on your heart. Allowing the Holy Spirit to provoke your heart, to prick your heart right now. And it's sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying to you, I've got you right where I want you. You're able to hear me now. Three weeks ago, you didn't want to hear from me. You were too busy. You were too involved in everything. And you're unwilling to slow down long enough. I want to tell you what I know about you. I want to tell you what I know about your family. I want to tell you what I've got in store for you. And it's good. He says to us in Jeremiah 29 and 11, For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, saith God. They are good and they're not evil. With the future, with the hope, with an expected end. And so tonight, child of God, it's not over. Not because the fat lady ain't singing. It's not over because God says it's not over. He's not through with you. He's not through with me. He's not done with your family. God's got great and mighty promises available and ready for you and I. So tonight, will you trust God? Will you trust the God in the crisis? Will you trust the God who allows the crisis so that we can develop deeper, more intimate relationship with him? I know I will. I'm trusting him right now. I'm trusting him so much that I'm trusting him for my next breath. He won't fail me. Can I tell you something? He won't fail you either. And so tonight, he is the God who allows a crisis. Often, it's not because we've done something wrong, but it's because God wants our attention, our undivided attention. You know how it is. You're talking to somebody and they gaze away and you're still talking to them. And you remind them and say, I'm talking to you. Do I have your undivided attention? I know you're listening to me right now. You're watching me. Do I have your undivided attention? If so, I want to ask you a question. God, he's the God in the crisis, and he's the God who will bring us to the other side of the crisis. And my question is this. Have you made a decision to give your life to Christ? Have you made a decision for Jesus and to say, God, I'm asking you to come into my heart and to save me. God, take me beyond the trials, the tragedies, the tribulations and the tough moments of life. Take me beyond the crisis because I want to trust you like I've never trusted you before. I want to trust you, God, on the other side of this crisis. I want to trust you no matter how long it takes to all of you business owners out there, to all of you restaurateurs, to all of you who haven't been able to conduct business to all of my barbers, to all of my hairstylists, to all of my salon owners and nail, and nail, nail salons. I want to tell you something tonight. God sees, he knows, but he also protects and provides. You got to trust him. I have to trust him. And so my question is, will you allow him to come into your heart as savior so that you can then make him Lord of your life? Tonight, would you bow your heads with me? If you've never accepted Jesus the Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to be born again. If that's you that are watching in tonight, you're listening to this message, I want to ask you to pray this simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent of my sin, and I ask you to come into my heart and to save me. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer with me tonight, you're born again. That's the most important decision you and I will ever make. And that's to make a decision for Jesus. To give him an opportunity to come into your heart and to take up residence by the way of the Holy Spirit. I know you're hearing me use terms that maybe you're not familiar with, the Holy Spirit. It is that inner witness. You know, sometimes you go through life and you say, I heard a voice. I heard a voice talking to me, telling me, don't go left, don't go right, but stay focused. When you give your life to the Lord, the Holy Spirit has a way of reminding you of the things you've learned, of the things you've heard, the things you've been taught. He'll remind us and warn us because he comes to protect us. So on tonight, 
as you've watched me, as you've listened. I pray tonight that you've heard the word of God of why God allows a crisis. And not only why he allows a crisis, but how God will take us through the crisis. If your back's up against the wall tonight, I want to just encourage you, pray and say, God, lead me. Lead me into your promises. I trust you like I've never trusted you before. If you're to, watching tonight and you're saying, I've still got some questions, I encourage you to please call the number that you see, 706-592-9211 with your prayer request. We've got individuals ready to pray with you, to pray the promises of God over your life. Tonight, I want to declare that you are favored. You're blessed of God. I want to declare to you tonight that God loves you so very much, and we do too at Abundant Life. I want to declare to you tonight that you're not in this by yourself. I know there are moments and times in life where you feel like you're by yourself. You're almost ready to throw in the towel. But I want to tell you tonight, you can't throw in your own towel. And God sure ain't going to throw your towel in for you. He's like that corner man in the 11th round of a heavyweight fight. He knows what you're capable of. He not only knows what you're capable of, but he knows that he is with you. He is for you and not against you. Tonight, trust God. Trust in his love. Trust his promises. They are yea and they are amen. I want to thank you for joining us here at Abundant Life, the Life Center, the place of hope, the place of healing, the place of love to everyone that we touch. Again, join us virtually on Sundays at 10 a.m. via Facebook Live and Sundays at 7 p.m. You can also connect with us through Facebook, through Instagram, through Twitter, and on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. We love you from Abundant Life Worship Center. God bless you.